Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. I just want to start off by thanking everyone for your comments yesterday in my video. Uh, it really, really means a lot. And um, yeah, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for all the your kind words of support and encouragement. Um, I think the reason why uh, I felt it was appropriate yesterday is I don't want you guys to think I'm taking you guys for granted because I haven't been uploading for a while and I just wanted to explain you know, give some insight as to why that was and how much it means to me to to launch the Waxcape. And on screen, bottom right, there's an image of the Waxcape. It is quite small. I didn't want to take up, obviously, uh, much of the video itself. But um, yeah. Um, also, I want to say there's been a lot of people on YouTube where they've been donating money. Please, guys, um, I don't feel comfortable you guys doing that. Um, there's no need whatsoever to donate any money. Um, if, if I was doing this for the money, well, I wouldn't be doing it because, as I said, there's not much monetization on YouTube for this. Um, so please, I, I, the gesture is really warmly received and welcome. But um, if, you, if you feel like donating, uh, put it towards a charity of your choice. But there's real no need to to donate any money. I feel really bad that you guys, uh, that some of you have been doing that. So please, um, please, please don't. Um, it's not, it's not, uh, I feel it's really awkward uh, when, when people do that. So uh, this is a case of a patient who attended with bilateral fully occluding earwax. It probably would have been a good candidate, especially in the right ear for the wax scope. And that's because they've got very narrow ear canal entrances and also very bendy ears. Um, so I'm just squeezing this through. The left ear was relatively straightforward in comparison to their right side is a bit more difficult to remove from the right, but that's that big plug. So you can see that it's quite a prominent second bend there. I'm having to really rotate the endoscope almost, uh, kind of you could argue ninety degrees to, to see the to see the eardrum. So the right side it's 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 completely and utterly blocked right from the first bend all the way to the eardrum, and that's why you're seeing those hairs. We can't avoid that. Those hairs are found on that first bend in particular. So I've just put some oil in. I'm uh, just to kind of change the consistency so I can get a better suction grip. Um, I'm using the endoscope not only to visualize the wax, but also to stretch open the ear. And that's why I said the wax coat might be a bit more beneficial um, because the wax coat will help dilate the entrance of the ear a bit more. Uh, but I do prefer the endoscope um, when I'm going uh, past the second bend. You just get better visual. Um, there's no denying that. Um, so I've just come out there because it's slightly blurring the lens's hair. So I just needed to reposition the endoscope. I'm just trying to get past those hairs as much as I can. If I go any further in, then I'll be right up against the wax. And if I come out too much and I won't be into the ear at all, I wouldn't be able to visualize past that first bend. So it's getting that happy medium where your view's not obstructed fully, uh, but you're neither too close or too far from the wax plug. So. This is trapped, lodged deep in the ear. So what I'm doing now, I'm just loosening it from the top. The oil should help lubricate. You can see here where I am now, there's a few hair strands. So it's a bit of matted wax. Whenever it's matted, it's always a bit more difficult to get a suction grip. The hair kind of just reduces that suction power. So I'm just wriggling it from the bottom. I'm gonna come back out, stretch the ear open, pass those hairs. So with the endoscope on the left-hand side, I'm using it almost like a crowbar. I'm pushing it posteriorly to stretch the ear open. But whilst you're doing that, you have to make sure the lens is towards the wax. And you're having to position the endoscope at the bottom left-hand side of the ear canal as well. It's about seven o'clock. If you're not at seven o'clock or thereabouts, then you won't be able to insert the instrument because it will come in contact with the endoscope. So there's a lot of technique and positional uh, use with the endoscope. So I'm just loosening it from the top now, trying to bring it down. I can slowly, just by watching, I can feel it's, it's quite an old video, so I can't remember um, the exact case, but I just felt it coming forwards there. You can just, by looking at it, you can feel that you're making a bit of progress. What was that famous last words? We shall tell. So again, so because the wax is coming out, I have to come back out with the endoscope, and inevitably when you come out with the endoscope a little bit, you've got those hairs. So people often ask, why don't you trim the hairs? It's just because, although it may be a bit unsightly, it's not really affecting me much. And trimming those hairs, um, as I said, they're gonna grow back anyway. And their hairs, unless the, there's so much hairs that you can't visualize the inside of the ear. And that has happened a couple of times. I just used a forceps and kind of pluck some of those, but you have to be careful because you don't want to lead to a furuncle, which is, um, 
or folliculitis, should I say, which is a, a bacterial infection of the hair follicle. So you'll be careful. So just put a bit more oil, just to lubricate a little bit more. You can see this on, on the left-hand side, there's a bit of keratin there. That was probably a did. It's the lighter shade of brown. And I've got it past, on the right-hand side, that's the second bend. And where the hairs are, that's the first bend. So in between the first and second bend, we call that an isthmus. That's a narrowing. And there's a second narrowing deeper in the ear, uh, about half a centimetre in front of the eardrum. So it's the isthmus where wax can get trapped. And it's difficult to kind of remove it from there. It's the narrowest part of the ear. So it's breaking up in little pieces. And it's a bit softer, this wax. So you've got to be careful not to really push the suction probe up against it because otherwise you just block it. So you're almost kissing the surface of the wax, if that's um, one way of putting it. So I'm just, as I'm bringing it forward, I'm just wriggling it as well, just to loosen it, just to squeeze it through. We're nearly there now. And this is uh, how when you use olive oil, a medical grade olive oil, so I have to stress that. So there's a difference between food grade and medical grade olive oil. Medical grade olive oil, it's cold pressed, there's no solvents, there's minimal heat. And it contains a high level of polyphenols, which is an antioxidant, which can fight off against free radicals. So free radicals can start causing cell death and decay. Um, so medical grade olive oil is full of and rich of antioxidants. So it's got a longer sh um, shelf life and you'll have less uh, uh, pathogens and allergens there. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. And if you are a specialist and you are interested in the wax coat, please do email info at clearwax.co.uk. Thank you. Bye.